a uniform or just exercise clothes. But the gear you wear is actually a second skin, and it's a multi-billion dollar industry. But does it really work? When it comes to athletic performance, can what you wear really affect how well you do? Nowadays, most athletic clothing is focused on getting rid of sweat. The buzzword is wicking, using fabric that moves sweat away from the body to keep us dry. But could that actually be the wrong way to deal with sweat? To find out, we jumped over the pond to visit a laboratory in Switzerland. AMPA is an independent facility that tests materials, textiles, and technologies for clients like the Swiss military. Here in this lab, they're testing clothing made by a company called Xbionic. The makers of Xbionic clothes believe there's a better way to design athletic apparel, a way to turn sweat into energy. If you just ask yourself the question, why do we sweat? And what sense does it make to take the sweat away from the body? Then we wouldn't sweat, you know, the evolution would have developed a human being without sweating. To examine the evolution of sporting apparel, sports science host John Brinkus will begin the test wearing regular workout gear. He'll go for a run on the treadmill in this one-of-a-kind climate chamber. So I'm wearing just a normal workout shirt, the kind that everybody wears in the gym. Now I'm gonna run in 125 degree heat. Before he starts his workout, John will swallow a high-tech pill. This is actually a wireless sensor. I'm gonna take my thermometer pill so that we can monitor my core body temperature. While the temperature we feel on the outside, on our skin, is important, it's the body's core temperature, deep inside, around the heart, that's critical. If the body core temperature goes above 4 degrees Celsius, at one stage you will not be able to control your muscles uh, anymore, or it can be even more dangerous and go to a heart attack or a complete collapse of the, of the whole thermoregulation system. Let's fire this up. Let's do it. It's time to find out how bad of an idea this actually is. Oh my god, that's hot. I feel like I could cook something right here. The climate chamber immediately climbs to a scorching 125 degrees. It's hot. Very hot. The ingestible sensor indicates that John's core temperature is spiking quickly. In only seven minutes, climbing from 98 to over 100 degrees and rising. I've only been running for a, a few minutes. I feel like I've been running for hours. I've never run in heat like this. John's clothing is wicking the sweat away from his torso, so it evaporates not on his skin, but on the outside of his shirt. Our thermal imaging camera reveals that it's not helping his body maintain thermal regulation. I'm on minute 12. I don't know how much longer I can make. John's core temperature is now over 102 degrees. If it climbs above 104 degrees, John could suffer heat stroke, kidney damage, and even brain damage. I don't know how much longer I can go. Oh, I'm really dizzy. With less sweat left on his body to evaporate, John's feeling weak because his body is using all of its resources just to cool down. Very simply, our body only can perform with a core temperature of 37 centigrade. And he takes nearly all his energy to keep this regulation. After only 14 minutes on the treadmill, in 125 degree heat, disaster strikes. You okay? Are you all right? 
Oh, man. I just got really dizzy. I don't know. I just kind of lost my footing, I think. Can we stop for a second? The sensors inside John's body indicate that his core temperature peaked at a dangerous 104 degrees. In less than 20 minutes, he lost over a quart of sweat and became seriously dehydrated. So could John's clothes have actually contributed to his collapse? The makers of X-Bionic Sporting Gear believe that moisture wicking, moving sweat away from the skin, actually works against our body's built-in cooling system. You will produce more sweat uh, because the, the body is trying to fight against uh, this overheating. And if the, uh, the sweat uh, cannot evaporate properly because you're wearing the, the wrong clothing, then it will produce more and more and more and more. We call that a vicious circle that uh, then at the end uh, will lead to a heat stroke, uh, like a heart attack. To test the theories at work in X-Bionic's revolutionary clothing system, we enlisted a man who has pushed the limits of human performance to unbelievable extremes. World record holding ultra triathlete, Vincenzo Catalano. An Ironman triathlon is an intense endurance event. A 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike ride, and then a full 26 mile marathon. Vincenzo specializes in ultra triathlons. Double or triple those distances. This Italian has run, biked, and swum more competitive miles than any human alive. I have run uh, 14 double Ironman, uh, eight triple Ironmans, uh, one quintuple Ironman, and four times I run uh, a Deca Ironman. That is the distance of uh, Ironman multiplied by 10, the longest distance ever done in ultra triathlon history. Vincenzo, what we're going to do is we're going to put you into the climate chamber. And we're going to raise the temperature to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is hot. What we want to see is how the X-Bionic clothing regulates your body temperature. But what I have is a sensor that you're going to swallow, yes. and we're going to be able to see wirelessly what your core body temperature is yes. at every moment. OK. All right? Here we go. OK. So can clothing actually improve athletic performance? That's the question here in this Swiss laboratory where the inventors of X-Bionic clothing are testing their theories on a couple of lab rats. Wearing plain old workout clothes, sports science host John Brinkus didn't fare well on the treadmill in the scorching heat of the climate chamber. <laughs> now, Italian ultra triathlete Vincenzo Catalano is hitting the treadmill in 125 degree temperatures. He's wearing X-Bionic clothing. Could this gear possibly keep his body's core temperature at safe levels in these unsafe conditions? In the blistering heat, it doesn't take long for Vincenzo to start sweating. and the X-Bionic clothing is also working hard. Here's what's happening. X-Bionic's researchers have developed a unique fabric that uses several techniques to keep an athlete cool. Rather than simply wick the sweat away from the skin, the X-Bionic fabric traps sweat in micro ducts. As the sweat travels through the ducts, it absorbs excess body heat and evaporates on the warm outer surface, releasing the excess heat away from the body. Some of this moisture condenses and is absorbed back into the skin in a cooler state. 
and panels of microducts are built in where the body produces the most sweat. The chest, armpits, and back. These panels help channel the remaining moisture and evaporation over a wider surface area on the skin, providing maximum cooling effects. We see quite well how the garment is, is functioning. We have the production here in the middle of the chest that is the, the highest. It will be then wicked laterally, and so it can evaporate uh, on the whole part of the, of the chest. If we can double the area that would be wet, we would also have the double cooling. Another X-Bionic innovation that improves performance is compression. A lot of workout gear uses compression to stabilize muscles which is fine, but the squeezing inhibits circulation. x solved this problem by spacing out the compression, improving blood circulation through the capillaries. This helps the cooling process and increases fresh oxygen flow to the muscles, improving performance. You can just keep going and going and going. Yes, I could, yes. As an ultra triathlete, the concentrating on long distance is very important to have technological clothing, to have ideal temperature inside the body. Even if he ran an entire marathon in this 125 degree oven, Vincenzo could maintain a core body temperature below 99 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 centigrade. That's because the X-Bionic clothing works with his body's evolutionary cooling systems, not against them. But for an ultra triathlete like Vincenzo, a run like this is a walk in the park. He wants more. So we put him on a bike in a scientifically controlled downpour. In cold, wet conditions, the same channels that pump warm air away from the body in the blistering heat work like insulation and keep warm air near the body. And this insulation keeps working when the workout is over. X-Bionic's design keeps the body warm, reducing the risk of muscle strains or tears after exercise. I feel uh, a lot of benefits wearing these clothes. So X-Bionic gear works for an incredible endurance athlete under any weather conditions. But can it make a difference for an incredibly average athlete? After cooling down and rehydrating, John enters the climate chamber again. But this time, he's wearing X-Bionic gear. And the difference is quickly apparent. Doesn't feel nearly as hot. In the regular gear, his core body temperature shot up to 104 degrees. He used over 97% of his energy just trying to keep cool and fail. But in the same brain melting 125 degree heat, John's core temperature never climbs above 100 degrees, allowing him to use his energy for performance. An amazing difference, created simply by wearing the cutting edge clothing engineered by X-Bionic. My body was much cooler. All of my sweat stays on me, so that my core body temperature stayed very low. So whether you're a world-class endurance athlete or a thoroughly average athlete, your performance can be improved if you wear the only clothes that can turn sweat into energy.